Hello and welcome to the special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Euro-Atlantic Course and Analytical Center UCU dedicated to the Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine on fire. One of the demands of the Russian side in negotiations to stop military aggression in Ukraine is the neutral status or non-alignment of Ukraine. More and more Western government officials, experts, academics and intellectuals recently are voicing the idea that this requirement is safe and acceptable. After all, many of them continue to believe that the war is an exclusively Ukrainian-Russian issue. It is critical to remind that even before the attack on Ukraine, Putin clearly outlined the demand not only to minimize the Ukrainian threat, but also to return the zones of influence to the 1997 borders, which puts all the countries of Eastern Europe and the Baltic states under attack. That later clearly understand the reality of the threat following the informational attacks on them in recent years and realizing which state we are dealing with, a state that has violated all international agreements for more than 20 years and destroyed the global security order. Why is the neutral status unacceptable for Ukraine today and in longer perspective? We have got convincing arguments from Ivana Klimpusensadze, MP and head of the Committee for Integration of Ukraine to European Union. Let's take a look. Dear friends, I understand that many people in the world and already some in Ukraine believe that for the sake of peace, um, in order to put an end to this massive killings of Ukrainian citizens by Russian ter uh, terrorist occupational force, we Ukrainians have to give up our civilizational choice. And we Ukrainians should accept um, a non-bloc status. But from my perspective, Ukraine should not accept this ultimatum of Putin uh, and his demand on neutral status. Why do I think so? It was exactly when Ukraine, according to our legislation, was a non-bloc country, was non-aligned country back in 2014. At that particular point, Putin has attacked Ukraine and grabbed part of our territories, both in Crimea and started occupying our eastern territories. At that point, he opportunistically used the chance when Ukraine was weakened in order to carry out at least part of his plan of destroying Ukraine and thus um, cutting off parts of our territories. So at that particular point, Ukrainians um, in 2013, according to, to uh, sociological polls, only 18% of Ukrainians have been supportive of NATO membership at that point. So only after Putin attacked, only after he started killing our people on our territories, the support for Ukraine's NATO membership has been growing. And now it reached 70, historical absolutely 76% of support all across the country also in the eastern regions, uh, whom many believe that they are um, not pro-Western. But Putin made them to be pro-Western. Putin made Ukrainian uh, nation to become a political nation, to become united in our only desire to be free, to be democratic, to, um, to, to rejoin the community of civilized states such as um, uh, European Union and NATO. I want to use this opportunity to remind the world that we did have this sheet of paper that did not protect us, the Budapest Memorandum. According to that memorandum, Ukraine has given up its third biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. But we were promised some assurances that if someone attacks us, we will be protected that our territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence will stay intact. We understand now that this document was not legally binding. We understand that um, that document did not protect us. Uh, but from my perspective, it was at least morally binding document. And if not for Russian Federation, then for UK and the US. And even though we are 
appreciative and grateful for all the support we are receiving today from the US, from UK, from France. Uh, as signatories to this document, we also see that um, any other type of guarantees than joining a real security political union such as NATO are not working. So that Budapest Memorandum um, leaves me with uh, little to no trust for any other security guarantees for Ukraine than by joining a North Atlantic alliance. So neutrality status for Ukraine today means that tomorrow Ukraine will have to be federalized according to Russian demands. And then at some point it will have to become some th southern um, district of uh, regional district of Russian Federation. I believe that ne neutrality today means slavery for Ukrainians tomorrow. We will not agree to that. Neutral status for Ukraine would mean that in the 21st century we are returning to the concept of the nine, uh, 19th century of great power politics and policies and, and spheres of influence. That would mean that if Russia said no, all the others followed and agreed that Ukraine is in some virtual sphere of interest of the Russian Federation. Uh, but the thing is that this great power politics has never actually led to a resolving of security issues. It is exactly that great power politics that led to the uh, First and Second World Wars. And that is exactly that great power politics when Russia decided to return, to, to regain its um, new, um, great power status led to Russian start of the war against Ukraine. So for us Ukrainians, nuclear status would mean that we are losing our subjectivity and that in the future we will um, slowly, gradually become part of the, we will, we will be pushed to become part um, of the Russian orbit of influence. We cannot agree to that. If Ukraine today loses its NATO membership perspective, that would be a colossal demotivation for most passionate, most motivated part of the Ukrainian citizens. That would cause additional cracks in now united Ukrainian society. Because then all the questions arise, why did we have the revolution of dignity? Why? Our heavenly hundred died. Why thousands of Ukrainian soldiers, after starting from 2014, defending Ukraine have died, if not for the um, ability to choose our own path, if not for the ability to be free, democratic and prosperous in the future. So agreeing to put in terms, um, from my perspective, that would mean not only loss for the Ukrainian society, but it would mean defeat of the West, who got scared of Putin's uh, nuclear back blackmail, who got scared of Putin's tactics and his pressure um, against Ukraine and his pressure also against Western uh, countries. So there is one more important argument against Ukraine's neutral status. Valery Charlie, chairman of the board of Ukraine Crisis Media Center, underlines that our international partners have to understand that NATO membership is not only strategic choice of Ukrainian authority, but Ukrainian people as well. It is really hard to understand why Ukraine should give up its Euro-Atlantic ambitions if Ukrainian society supports them. Valery Charlie also called a uh, neutral status, a trap. Let's listen. Dear friends, Ukraine is under attack. We appreciate your continuous support as you stand firm with us, shoulder to shoulder. Ukrainian people, Ukrainian brave warriors, defend not only my country, we defend security in Europe, we defend international order. Our enemy pushing our government for different demands for just stopping war, stopping aggression. And we should not fall into the trap with one of the demand, so-called neutrality. Why? 
I want to share with you the reasons why it will be absolutely unacceptable in my country and our people will not support such type of decision. The first reason that uh, in 2014, before beginning of Russian war against Ukraine, we was the non-bloc country. It was in our constitution, that position shared with our government, and unfortunately, it's not allow us to avoid Russian attack. The another reason, second reason, it will be very difficult to implement in our constitution because we need majority, constitutional majority. That's, if you understand, very difficult to achieve in this time of war. The third reason is not only position of our people and most of all fight for the country. It's also position of our establishment. It's position of our patriots that Ukraine want and Ukraine will have right to choose our future, to choose our security model for the future. Now we have in the constitution the best solution to be a member of collective security in Europe, in the Euro-Atlantic space. And that's a goal, strategic goal. It's a, like a decision of all the people of my country. Why we should change that decision? Okay, under the Russian bombs, the killing civilians. Do you think this is, would be real good decision for implementation for the future? I'm not sure. This could divide our country, divide our people. It could the, absolutely change the situation that we have unity among the people and authorities. And Russians understand that. They would burn us internally. They can't to achieve this goal by all the rockets, tanks, and iron vehicles, even killing civilians. So they want to undermine our unity. That's why, please be very careful, just analyze the possible scenario that Ukraine could go on this ultimate demand by Russians. And another reason, neutrality is very expensive. It will take more than 100 or even more billions of US dollars for self-defense. So it's a temporal decision. It will be very difficult to implement also. That's why I wanted to, to emphasize that we need your understanding, we need your support, just not allow Russians to uh, divide us, not allow Russians to push in our government for that type of decision. And we believe we will win if you will be together, if we will not go not any ultimate demand by enemy. That's only reason for the demand from their side, destroy Ukraine. Only reason for their side, just Ukraine will not be in the European map. We will not allow them to do that. We will remain on this track, European track. We will be together. We will achieve our goals. We will be in the one collective and security system and we will prevail. Volodymyr Ogrisko, former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, says that even if we talk about neutral status of Ukraine, the most problematic question within this topic is security guarantees for Ukraine. We already saw the price of Ukraine's neutral status in 2014. It was occupation of our territories by aggressor and deep concern of our partners. Hi. Uh, these days, uh, many of my friends, many of my Western friends uh, are calling me and asking the same question. Uh, what can we do all together uh, to stop the Russian aggression? My answer is pretty simple. We should stop and punish Putin. We should stop and punish Russia. Uh, how to do it? Absolutely uh, simple way to have political will. So my answer will be, dear Western friends, be brave, do what you can, and then uh, the victory will be over this uh, uh, Russian uh, empire, over this uh, Russian fascist regime. But uh, uh, let us uh, discuss uh, this issue probably in another way, because some of the uh, 
colleagues uh, are uh, calling for so-called neutrality for Ukraine. Uh, my answer is very simple. Uh, at least for the time being, uh, the purpose uh, to be a full, uh, full-pledged member state of NATO is fixed in the Ukrainian constitution. So how can we uh, uh, do in, 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 under these circumstances? Uh, it is, in my view, for the time being, absolutely impossible to change uh, our constitution, uh, even if uh, the, the, the ruling party uh, will insist on that, because they have no, so, no uh, necessary majority in Ukrainian parliament. So, uh, uh, another question. Okay, let us think that this is uh, nevertheless possible. What kind of guarantees and who will be these guarantors? Russia in no case, because Russia uh, pursues for the time being uh, in Ukraine uh, the policy of genocide. So uh, Russia first should be, should be stopped and punished for these uh, war crimes. Putin personally uh, and his, as his surroundings uh, uh, should be punished as the war criminal. And let us not uh, forget about the fact that uh, under the Budapest Memorandum, Russia was one of the so-called guarantors of uh, Ukrainian territorial integrity. So it is absolutely uh, 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 not possible to imagine that Russia could be among uh, these countries. Second point, in my view, the best guarantor for uh, Ukraine's neutrality neutrality uh, I, I, I use for the time being as only at the uh, something hypothetical uh, could be if uh, Ukraine's army will be uh, strong and uh, well equipped. If Western allies uh, will guarantee that Ukraine's army will be one of the best equipped armies in the world, then okay, let us think. Uh, the next point, uh, if uh, uh, Russia will nevertheless once again threaten Ukraine, the West should give Ukraine very concrete guarantees, not like in Budapest memorandum about some consultations. It should be very concrete and tough guarantees that Ukraine will be uh, supported immediately in all possible forms. Next, uh, uh, Russia in all these cases should not be in a position to deploy uh, her forces, her military forces, uh, uh, less than 300 kilometers uh, from Ukrainian border. Next, uh, Ukraine should be helped uh, to join European Union within next one, two years. Next, if Russia, nevertheless, will continue to threaten Ukraine, all these uh, requirements uh, will be not valid anymore. But for the time being, everything what I what I am uh, talking is uh, highly hypothetical uh, issues. In fact, we should stop Putin. We should uh, punish him. And I hope that combining our efforts with our uh, Western friends we will win victory and one more victory over this Russian fascist regime. Thank you. Danilo Loptivsky, director of Kyiv Security Forum, also calls demands of uh, neutral status unacceptable. Let's listen to his message. I support the position of President Zelensky and Ukraine's negotiation team aimed at finding a peaceful solution, defending Ukraine and deterring Russia's aggression and Putin's assault uh, against our country. It goes without saying that we have to explore today all possible different tools and options. However, in my opinion, the idea of neutral status is far from being not only acceptable, this is unacceptable, but realistic. Uh, and I have three reasons for that. The reason number one, Ukraine has been neutral for many years. Ukraine remains de facto neutral today. 
but the very status of being a neutral country couldn't protect Ukraine against Russia's offensive in 2014, Russia's ag aggression in the temporarily occupied territories of Crimea and Donbas, uh, uh, against the aggressive actions of the Kremlin throughout the, the last eight years, uh, and even more, of, and uh, of, uh, the, the neutral status, the de facto neutral status, couldn't protect Ukraine against a full-fledged, cynical and unprovoked uh, um, a war of, waged against our nation by Putin. And his reasons is very clear. He tries to kill Ukraine. He is aimed at the very existence of Ukraine and Ukrainians, and he tries to eliminate Ukraine from the international map. The reason number two. If we talk about any kind of bilateral instruments with Russia, we have to understand that, and our experience proves this, that Russia will never keep its promise and uh, if, uh, will never ensure the so-called Russian guarantees, as we know the price of them. Uh, Russia has violated, cynically violated, every and all bilateral and multilateral agreement with Ukraine aimed at ensuring Ukraine's independence and sovereignty. There is yet that reason. The overall majority of Ukrainians stand strongly for uh, Ukraine's NATO membership. Ukrainians rightly believe that only the accession into the Euro Atlantic Collective System of Security could, can protect uh, our country from the external uh, threats and dangers. Uh, for this, um, the attempts to explore this neutral type of solution, in my opinion, could be very harmful as it may provoke the internal instability and provoke the and uh, uh, undermine the strong, extremely strong national solidarity within Ukraine. Uh, in my view, there is only one way how we can move forward today at this particular point. Uh, instead of having any kind of bilateral talks with Russia that will never bring any tangible results and reliable results, uh, we have to explore the option of multilateral process and to stay strongly with our Western allies led by the United States. Only this type of multilateral process, in my opinion, can lead us to some, to some forms, to some shapes of a possible security mechanism that can defend Ukraine at this particular moment. And there is something more to say. We survive because of the heroic fight of Ukraine's armed forces, of Ukraine, Ukrainian brave men and women who defend with, with arms, defend our sovereignty. And I use this opportunity to call our Western allies to provide Ukraine with necessary military uh, tools, weapons, air defense systems that can uh, help Ukrainians defend our motherland. So definitely the answer to the question, would recognizing of neutral status really stop Russian aggression in Ukraine, is no. Uh, Ukraine and Ukrainian people keep asking for support and understanding of the whole civilized world. And while you're thinking, we are fighting. In the description to this video, you can find the information how personally you can help Ukraine against Russian aggression. If you find our job useful, please like and share this video. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.